I love doing podcasts and love listening to them. Uh, but no, you do the same, but while coding. I mean, that's, that sounds amazing. Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I started doing the, this Twitch streaming thing where I, where I write code on a live stream. Uh, and it's been pretty interesting to do. Um, but, but yeah, when I, it's hard to come up with ideas to do for that. Uh, there are some things that, that I feel like probably aren't compelling enough to show people. Um, and so I don't do it there. Uh, and there's some things that, you know, since I, since I work for Blockstream, there's some things I can't show on a stream because they're, they're things for Blockstream and not open source. I mean, it's technically open source, but not things I want to show. Um, uh, so yeah, sometimes I do have, I have a hard time coming up with what to do on my stream and, and maybe I'll just find a feature request and implement it. Lately, I've been doing a lot of taproom stuff as probably expected. Yeah, what is the the kind of interaction that you get out of these calls or live streams? Um it's so Twitch has a chat feature and so people who are watching you can can say things in the chat, they can talk to me or talk to other people. Uh there hasn't been a whole lot of interaction. Uh most of it's been around, you know, questions about Bitcoin itself. Uh some some people do ask about like what am I doing and and if I could explain more in depth about what I have what I'm working on. Uh but yeah a lot of it is um a lot of it to me feels like uh uh what do you call it? Rubber duck debugging where you explain uh what you're doing out loud to an ina- inanimate object like a rubber duck. But for me it's the Twitch chat. Uh you know I'm explaining what I'm doing and and by doing so, I can end up catching some bugs or some logical flaws just by, you know, vocalizing, you know, what, what the, what I'm doing. And I found that to be, to be pretty helpful. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I see the same with, well, for example, podcasting. And I mean, it's one thing to sit down and to listen to a podcast, right? And to accumulate that information. But you tend to forget to think, right? To actually, yeah. you know, sit down and, and seriously think if what you hear is right or wrong. And, and a nice trick to get you to think is to force you to speak, right? Because yeah. you, you cannot speak without thinking. That's just impossible. So as soon as you speak something out, you will automatically do some thinking. And if what you're saying is stupid, probably you're going to get shivers and you will realize it. Right. Yeah. So th- that's awesome that this works in coding too. Yeah. Um, I also found that the streaming has actually motivated motivated me to do uh things that I wouldn't normally do. So in the past I didn't do a whole lot of code review. Uh and it was mostly out of well so part of it is is that that I never really felt comfortable with code review. Um I never really felt comfortable with with like that my feedback was useful. And and you know the only way to get better is to do it. Uh, which I hadn't really been doing, but, but when I started running out of things to implement on my stream, I decided maybe I should try streaming code review uh, and see how that goes. And I found that, um, by doing that, it really, it made me better at reviewing code, uh, made me feel more confident in the reviews I write, you know, when I do code review off stream. And, and so, so now I've decided to start doing code review more often on my stream. And uh, I think a, a lot of people find that interesting as well because it's not just me writing whatever I feel like, but I'm also looking at what other people have written, critiquing it, explaining ideas that other people have had, and finding things that I wouldn't have necessarily done or thought of. Yeah, that's cool. Right, kind of this uh, this drive to you know speak about something new, something that uh, you know is, is novel, uh, kind of leading you to actually try out more things. And, and do things that might have been boring in a different set and setting, but just because you can talk to it <laughs> all to your webcam. Uh, yeah. and, uh, also, you know, the other aspect is it's not just you talking, it's you getting instant feedback too. So did it, for example, happen that someone in the audience found a bug that you were writing and notified you in chat? Uh, yes. Usually happens with typos because I'm really bad at spelling. Uh, <laughs> I just spell something wrong, uh, that, that I wouldn't catch until I try to compile it later. Uh, that's happened a few times. There's also been a few times where, where someone has pointed out a logic error, uh, that, that I didn't realize, uh, 
at, at, at the moment. Uh huh. Yeah, right. That's fascinating. It's kind of this instant feedback, this instant review. Uh, and you know, especially if, if it's high quality and, and sincere, that seems to be like a, a very efficient way, actually. Or, or do you think that the review comes too early? Right, that it's kind of just wasting your time, but you would have found the bug anyway as soon as you would have looked over it again. Um, I think it's it's uh, not really. So so some of these com- most of these comments are are on you know small things that I, I definitely would have caught them later. Um, but sometimes it it would be something that that I would have would have taken me hours to find just just because it was is like something that seems inconsequential at the moment right so if someone points out you know oh you you uh say you wrote less than instead of greater than over there uh that might have taken me a while to figure out um but but since it's pointed out right right away then that's that's actually pretty useful 